So just to sort of remind people where we're at, I'm in the administrative building. I want to just remind people what strategies I have in play because they really are going to define uh, the next several episodes. Um, first, I've got Impactors, and Impactors uh, rewards me handsomely and penalizes me mercilessly if I don't do this and quit this contract or quit this um, strategy before before it's done and what it wants me to do is impact um three different celestial bodies it says celestial bodies very specifically not planets necessarily so we're going to pick off the easy ones the moon and the mimis and that should happen today and then i'm thinking for the third one to be heading towards eve and doing an impactor with eve and then once this is done i'm going to shift right away into planetary flybys after that which has me doing flybys of three different planets this time so over the next few episodes we'll we'll be visiting a variety of the inner planets albeit probably briefly and in preparation for all that i picked up also the probe frenzy strategy which um penalizes me for crude launches crude launches the costs of them are twice what they were before but um i get increases in probe transmission science uh probe recovery science in funds and science from uncrewed milestones i also get bonuses for that so i think that makes it worthwhile i'm not a hundred percent sure these science bonuses I'm not sure that they work with Kerbalism. I'm not 100% sure that they do, but I know that these milestone bonuses do work with Kerbalism. Okay, let's get into what's going to be happening today. Um, let's, in fact, go right over to Mission Control. One more I was looking at for today is down here. I love these really easy ones. Position the hex four in an adjusted orbit of Kerbin. Here are some orbital parameters. I went and took a look at what it expected me to do it was just a very small change in i can't remember if it was the apoapsis or periapsis one of the two i worked out what the likely cost would be it'd only be 26 meters per second the hex 4 which is just an old old satellite from a long time ago um can do that easily i mean free stuff i'm gonna grab that one for sure so we'll grab that we grab those did i grab those other ones i did grab the other ones and we're off. So the plan today, well, let's get out to the Hex 4. Let's just do that right away. Where's the Hex 4 on this? Oh, how about if I select probes rather than relays? There we go. Hex 4 is in here somewhere. Here it is. Here's the Hex 4. Let's get out there. Let's do this mission. I always have to be careful with picking up these adjust the orbit missions. I want to make sure that the satellite has enough delta v in order to do it i don't want to grab one and then find out i don't have the fuel for it just adjusting contracts here uh but this one's going to be easy peasy and also i haven't most of my uh satellites that are in orbits are actually in relays that are very specific orbits and i don't want to end up moving those around but this one will be easy so if we take a look here is its current orbit the blue one, this is the orbit we're shooting for, so it's just a very slight change. Uh, periapsis here. I mean, come on, this is... I was predicting this to be about 26 meters per second. Let's see how close we get. So my new apoapsis needs to be 4,537. So let's see. Let's do this. Is it going down? There we go. Now I went way too far. I'm not very good at... Okay. <laughs> I'm not very good at the draggy bits. Okay, let's see here. 4,537. And I'm just looking at the predicted apoapsis over here on the side. 500... And 30... That's 30... Uh, that's darn close enough and 26.2 meters per second right on what i would have predicted it to be excellent let's put that right on the periapsis there all right uh so that burns coming up in just a couple of hours we got nothing else on the go so let's just let's just do that so where's kerbin so we can watch ourselves go around there's kerbin there put the view on free it always looks better free views i think and oh i have to do this one <laughs> i almost opened up my kerbalism or not my kerbalism my kos terminal 
and ooh, more science and forgot that this thing does not have a KOS computer on it so I actually do have to do this manual like but that's okay oh we should really reduce the thrust it's predicting the burn of 0.6 there now it's a five second burn that's better get ourselves a little closer okay and we'll just start the burn and all I want to watch are these orbital parameters when they go green we're done I mean low-lying fruit you always want to grab these low-lying fruit when it comes to contracts there that's it don't even have to do the whole burn it's already close enough it went green gotta wait the obligatory 10 seconds and this feels like a long 10 seconds there it goes we're done all right excellent we can now get rid of our contracts plus window we can get rid of this we can reorient this back onto its normal vector it's not doing anything it has i've completely forgot it and even what the purpose of this thing was but it's doing okay oh let's turn i'm noticing the solar panels i have a window that i have to aim at the sun here for the solar panels to work there we go we're good all right let's get back to the space center uh let's warp this to sunrise just notice it's nighttime all right let's get in there and when i say something i can get to minmus the costs of going to minmus and going to the moon are so similar it's really easy to build something that's capable of doing both without really wasting too much okay so we're going to start with i think my best pro body is still the octo right the octo is better than the hex or is the hex better than the no the hex is the better one there we go haven't gotten much into the pro bodies okay and we'll uh, I, I like the gold okay let's start right away thinking about science because there is some new science that oh no this guy doesn't have new science it's old old science <laughs> uh we are going to let's see here configure uncrewed experiments this thing has a ten when, notice when i hold it over this menu this disappears i'm not sure what that is okay so science at Min this is going to minmus we've never gone to minmus so that means all of our science is available so we got the telemetry report i'm going to do that i'm also going to do the site experiment um uh, oh no not the site the site experiment takes an hour to perform and as this is going to be an impactor it likely won't be alive long enough especially in near space around Kerbin or around Mimis to warrant the the light experiment or the site experiment that's better to be done in orbit but I do have the light experiment which only takes 10 seconds to perform um yeah that's that's all that is so that configures the probe we'll start both of those off we can now close this because it's really getting on my nerves um we can also do going to our science science here a temperature scan so we'll put on the thermometer and we'll set that one going and we can also do the geiger counter radiation scan this is the science that comes from kerbalism um and anything else is really not worth our time there is other sciences but they really are involved getting into orbit and this thing's going to be an impactor because that's what the impactor thing wants me to do and okay communications we are going to be a little bit further away so instead of one communitron i'm just going to put on two you know i just do it like that for now we'll tweak things a little bit more later and let's take a look at science make sure this is all all oakley doakley oh it's going to need salt here let's put these both on here for now oh and a silly there and also of course you know what? i'll put it underneath gonna need the kos computer core because we can run kos stuff let's extend okay that's being simulated so it's going consuming 1.74 units of electricity per second that can easily be covered by just a row of oxats and i'm realizing i put this thermometer in a dumb spot let's just stick all this stuff on and we'll worry about cleaning it up in a little bit i'm just going to surround this with oxats 
that can easily cover the electrical clock, like trickle costs <laughs> and something that somebody pointed out in the comments that I was missing is right here there is a little indicator here for uh, calculating the amount of electrical generation that's going on and its default is this one it's in full sunlight and it's assuming a hundred percent production from all of these solar panels which clearly is not possible um, I got into the math of calculating, well, you know, if this one's full on and this one's on an angle and these ones are in the shadow, how much electrical generation I'll get. But actually, Kerbal isn't built that in for us. If I click it once, it's now in the sunlight with an estimated solar panel output, which takes into account that some of them will be in the shadow and some of them will be in an angle. And notice how it adjusts how much electricity is being produced. In full sunlight, if you had sort of 360 degrees of sunlight, it would do 2.1 units of electric charge per second, but in a simulated one, it's now 4.29 electric charge per second. Again, can easily cover what it needs. And then you can also say, well, how much is it going to do in the dark? Which is really handy for showing how long are your batteries are gonna last. So for instance, this thing's in the shadow, the batteries will only last, the duration here is 10 minutes and one second. I, I, I don't like that, so I'm going to get, I'm thinking probably just, you know what, let's put an Oscar B underneath it. And then put some batteries on here. So what do a couple of these do? Just two. And now this will last for 30 minutes in the dark and that should be absolutely fine to run all of the experiments if we happen to be running the experiments in the dark. So that's pretty cool. And let's see now, how much Delta V do we got with this? Let's stick an ant engine on the bottom. And the ant engine gives us uh, 1,687 meters per second of vacuum delta V to get the Minmus. You only need about 930 meters per second. Again, remember we're not going for an orbit. We're just going for an impact. So I'm just gonna bring this down. That's 957 meters per second. That's a little close. So let's just go up a little bit. That's 1,118, that should be easy. Thrust to weight ratio is over half, That's so that's fine. There we go, we are on the verge of actually having ourselves a probe here already. Let's uh, do a little bit of adjusting. And put some have these antennas come out like this. Now we're into making it look nicer. That looks pretty good. And lights. Can't forget the lights. Let's put on four. Make them gray to match the Oscar. And we'll make these blinky amber lights. Blink on, turn the blink period down to about half a second. Oh, and let's put these in a more sensible spot. One there. One there. And seriously, I think I think I think we're onto it. <laughs> and uh Oh, the calculator also tells you how long you're in the shadow of Kerbin. Yeah, if you start fiddling with the orbits, the only issue is, is the orbit options are low orbit. Or I, I got a comment from Philip that um, it will also calculate how much time you should expect to spend in the night. If you're in high orbit or low orbit. Um, I have a spreadsheet that does that, so I tend to just trust the spreadsheet. This thing's going to go in no orbit, so should be good. Okay, um... Jeepers, I, I think I think this is this is it, believe it or not. I don't think there's anything else I need to think about. So this is going to be the Minmus one. I told you this was gonna be fast. Save that. Uh, let's get into action groups. We'll put the antenna on action group zero. Uh, toggle those antennas and then we'll retract them. We don't need them. And yeah, all this thing needs is uh, a booster. What, ma what's the mass of it? Mass of it's only 399 kilograms. So I just need to find a booster. If I can get that into orbit, that shouldn't be a problem. 
I'll go to my saved boosters over here. Uh, what is it? About 400 kilograms? It's a range G's by mass. That always makes this easier. Okay, well, the Swivel 1 booster can do is my smallest one, and it can do 930 kilograms, so that's pretty easy. Let's switch this off for a smaller decoupler. That's a stack separator. That one. That's a separator. Come on. That one. There we go. There we go. Oh, and a fairing to enclose all this in. There we go, there we go. This is the whole shebang. Yeah, uh, we're looking we're looking at the thing. Let's see here. Just just staging a little bit. Oh come on, don't be like that. There. <laughs> you wanna be that way, be that way. Gosh, dang it. Uh, let's see. This can go here. This can go here. Let's unstage the fairing. So the fairing's not in the staging diagram because we'll use an action group. We'll use action group 5 to deploy the fairing. We'll put the fairing onto clamshell deploy. We'll up the force a little bit and go to four sides. Okay, let's start going through all this. So contracts... The only contract that's involved is the impactor probe contract. Um, oh, impact uncrew probes on three different planets slash moons. They don't count. Oh, that changes things. Ah, so there's why I have the fine print on here. Notice that although things like Gilly and Ike are on the list... They don't have on the list the moon or Minmus. Okay. A Minmus and the moon or moons? Okay, so I thought I could get away with something. I'm not getting away with something. Looks like we're going to be going to Eve or Duna <laughs> uh, sooner than I would have thought. Okay, so we're going to have to go to Eve, Moho, Duna. I don't think I have the antennas to get out to Drez. I certainly can't get to Elu, and I have no idea why Jewel isn't on this list. Interesting. All right, no problem. We're still going to fire this thing off the Mimis. Now that it's built, I'm going to do it. And then we'll adapt it to be able to go to Eve. Uh, control should be fine. Probe has been configured. Science should be good. Uh, power generation is good. Electrical storage is good. Antenna strength is good. Antenna speed is good. It should be fine. Uh, data storage, that's a good point. Um, let's just up the data capacity. I'm sure that's fine. Propulsion's fine. RCS is irrelevant. Parachutes are irrelevant. Thermal protection is irrelevant. Lights I've done. Upgrades. Um, the ant engine, I'm sure, is fine. There, let's get in here. And engine has 77 ignition, so I'm sure it's fine. There we go. Um, thrust of weights. Oh, I got to adjust the thrust of weight at launch. That's why I got me in my checklist. Let's get rid of this. Do -do. Have to come down a little bit. Um, to, uh, I got the question, how do you put on the custom checklist into here? You have to get into the config files of this mod, which is the Werner Checker mod, which I, I find kind of unfortunate with this mod that there is no interface for you to do this directly. So, um, you actually have to get into the files itself, look at the, look at the configs, see how they work and adjust them according. It's not that hard, but it is kind of a pain. Uh, fairing deploy, I've dealt with st staging is fine. So I think we're all good here. A little bit more thrust. There we go. All right, I'm, I'm thinking I'm just going to launch this thing. 
we're just going to send this on its way to Minmus. Sure, why not? It's only 12,000 curb bucks if it, if something if there's something I overlooked then oh I got a contract complete. What contract's complete? Oh yeah, of course. The hex 4. <laughs> okay, let's uh flat out just launch this. I want to go to Minmus. I've not sent anything to Minmus yet. I don't think this is going to help with the impactor probes, but that's okay.